గురు కృపా కేవలం నమస్తే వ్యోమ్ వెరీ వామ్ వెల్కమ్ టు సచ్ అండ్ టుడే సద్గురు శ్రీ ముజీ బాబా కి జయ What questions? <coughs> questions, reports. tantrums no <laughs> <laughs> Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharishi said that the notion I am something is the root of all suffering. The idea I am something. And what is the shortened version of this I am something? The idea of me, me, M-E, <laughs> is the notion I am something. And in usual use, the even shorter version is i in usual use so if this notion the i or the me is it became empty of meaning did not point to any object this became emptied of its referential nature then what is left So the entire spectrum, right from object to the self, awareness itself, is it? in that entire spectrum we have gone from referring to this I as many of these things. Is it? Now if I tell you that the truth needs no such reference. you don't need to even fix the i in its true position <laughs> is it if it is the true position it must always be and all positions that you can give to it all references that you can make about it are fundamentally flawed because it is beyond any such reference that you can make See? 
this is where the inquiry comes in when you make a reference to yourself the question is asked but who are you who am i of these references to yourself what is it that is left and all concepts in some way refer to you as if you are the limited self we go beyond this conceptual knowledge and even beyond intellectual reasoning you no longer know yourself conceptually but you are not empty of the true knowing it is empty of this blurriness that comes with false reference making that is why i have been asking what is it that you know when you know nothing i know on the face of it it doesn't sound like a very appealing question this is that it sounds like word play almost but it isn't we only suffer from what we think we know have you ever suffered without thinking you know something you have to at least make a conclusion that i know what this is to suffer from it as a property said no? to be happy you don't need anything but to be miserable you definitely need something <laughs> and i would add to that and say you need to know something now the mind will come and say but that is a dumb way to live what kind of living is that that's so dumb is it this is just the momentum of prior conditioning i was saying the other day is it this sort of bumblebee came into the room and it is fluttering its wings and going from place to place so i was asking everyone whether they feel like she is thinking about it and then saying okay i'm going to flap flap like this then flap flap like that is it but the beautiful intelligence which animates it the same supreme intelligence is 
animating our lives. Is it? A bird, new, newborn, but in the season of migration, knows which direction to fly in. Is it? But it's not a conceptual knowing. Presumably, presumably. I have to speak to the bird about that. <laughs> <laughs> There is an innate intelligence which is driving all of this. Like Guruji says, the plant or the tree is not deciding where its next branch is going to be. Should it be left, left, right? It's not deciding and yet, so beautiful that every one of them is unique and yet such supreme beauty is present. So, this surrender, this letting go is not dumb, it is being with this supreme intelligence which is animating this entire perceived creation. But it does not even make that distinction between the phenomenal and the nominal, the perceived and the perceiver, even this, these distinctions are not needed there. So now don't exchange past concept for new concepts. Don't exchange the ideas for, yes, I used to think I'm a person, but now I know that I am the self, or I am the self and the person, or some newfangled notion like this. Allow yourself to let go. Allow the tr truth to breathe in this way without again covering it up with conceptual dust. And if you need a reassurance, Master Bankai has said that all things are perfectly resolved in the unborn. You see? All things are perfectly resolved in the unborn. So can we not give it a chance? What he said. <laughs> Let the unborn deal with everything. You see, what is it? Rumi coat, very beautiful that day. What a joy to be empty. That now God can live this life. See? So whether you call it consciousness, you call it God, you call it the unborn, you call it the self various terms. They are not exactly synonymous, but I use synonymously many times. And what is the other option anyway? I say let God lead, lead, lead this life. What you got? What option do you have? Who else is there besides this one consciousness, one being? Show me that one. Then we'll pick. Is it? Presented God, your very being. Is it undeniable? Now we present the other option. Then we'll take an objective call. Okay? Show the other one. Who is here? The lawyer in our head is representing which client? 
who is the client of this lawyer who is objecting vehemently and pleading a case for this me who is that you're here in satsang presumably you want freedom is it but we can't even find that one who wants freedom huh <laughs> can you find and the one who wants freedom what can what freedom can you give to this body it is not in chains it is fine who else did we find we are looking very simply okay not nothing special very objectively asking there seems to be a voice who is representing a me is it now who is it actually representing we just have to find that one and present and say this is the one it is representing i need to take care of this one is it now you are taking care of this one also in your quest to find liberation so let's find that one and give liberation to it who wants it yeah. okay. and try to meet this question fresh because otherwise the mind will keep saying yeah i know who am i it doesn't exist i don't exist any this is all still answers so see if you can meet the question fresh who wants freedom what is here that wants freedom found <laughs> found not found Okay, so what did you find? Can I say something? Yeah. Um, the me I take myself to be. The me should. I take myself as. Yes. Um, if I if I would answer me. Yes. Um, I assume this one exists because when I say me, for instance, yes. or or when I feel touched, when I feel. Um, someone insults me mm -hmm. me me mm. what is this me yeah because i feel that there is a um, something physical something physical okay uh, it's good go on mm -hmm. let's keep looking like that so i assume that because there is uh, an emotion in this body Yes, that is assumed. Yes, I that assume that it I is exist. in this body. Also, is assumed. Yes. Yes. Because there are many emotions in this body. Assumed, uh, presumably, in this body. <laughs> What's in this body? How you know? <laughs> to to me, because I think I'm a me. Okay, when I when I say something, I I feel I exist. Okay. I feel that I exist, and there are many emotions in this body. Yes. Yeah. So, for instance, today I was feeling miserable. Miserable. And it felt very, very true. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, because when I was feeling miserable, um, the story was telling me, "Oh, actually, this is." how you are deeply you know yes how you know and i don't know i felt it would it would stay forever okay but now i see that it just falls yeah okay and emotions and they pass so it's not it's not really what i am yeah cuz you were still there You're still there. Yeah. These emotions, the quality and quantity of them changes. You see, it comes and goes. The thoughts also change. Quality, quantity, all changes, comes and goes. You are still there. Which one is this one? This one is 
very light. This one is very light. The light one is which one? This is a good experiment. Okay, so this one is very light. Now if I give you heavy books to carry, does this one become heavy? It doesn't. No, but I would feel that the attention would come mostly towards the, the weight. If attention went towards the weight, what is heavy? Can we try. <laughs> you see? The one that is light, you see, is it uh, impacted by the weight of the body? Is it? Is it? No. So. So this one. What can we say about it which is true? Or what can we know about it for certain? <coughs> yeah, it has always been here. It has always been here. Okay, we'll get into why we cannot even say that for certain, but it's okay for now. <laughs> as far as I can remember. Yeah. How big is it? Huh? It's here. Okay. So it is not here in the same way that this thing is this bottom. Because if it is here, then it has a particular shape, size, weight, everything. Okay. So when you say this one which is very light has just always been here okay. and yet when you say you don't know what you're saying is that I can't find any shape of it size of it okay. have you met anything in this world that doesn't have any attributes like shape or size okay. so where is this one then Can you miss it? No. Can't miss it and can't locate it. Wow. <laughs> you see? This is the paradox. The minute we go inside, the moment we go inside, you see? It is apparent. And yet, where is it we cannot see? Where is this inside we cannot see? Now, if this bottle came to you and say, I want freedom, what do you tell to it? This is freedom. This is freedom, <laughs> yeah. But I am so heavy, I am full of this cream or what? <laughs> then? It will pass. <laughs> Two pass is true. You're not that. You're not that. It's true. But what do we tell ourselves? A different story. A different story. Now obviously it has um, festered over the weekend probably, you see, so now it just, you must be feeling like, no, but to give it up instantly would be quite a waste of a weekend, <laughs> isn't it, <laughs> it can feel like that, <laughs> many times uh, uh, it happened in Monday satsang that we come and we're like, I'm really going to talk about this thing because it was so real. The minute you start talking, you're like, okay, actually, I can't even find it so much now. You see? But it just feels like, I spent the whole weekend on it. 
Ha es cuando Jorge que no ha organizado el tiempo. So and uh, this is symptomatic of how we meet every moment actually. See? Because we've built up a life story over so long. See? That when we when this moment is just here so fresh. This is like my God. But you have real problems, you know. <laughs> Do I? Yeah, because you've dealt, tried to deal with them for so many years, they must be real. See, all circumstantial evidence. But what, what do you actually find? If only it's an alternative but yeah. <laughs> only Oh instead of saying but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it would stay because it doesn't it doesn't stay on its own. It doesn't? It doesn't stay on its own. But you said it doesn't never goes anywhere, it's always here. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else stays but it. I know, I know, I but know. But <laughs> But it doesn't feel like that when I'm not in your presence. Sometimes yes, a little bit. But not most of the time. Is it dependent on f some feeling? No, it's not. But the feeling is much more pleasant yes. when there is not there are not those layers of yes. air, stories and yes. stuff. So what if the truth did not feel good? Would you still want it? Sorry? If the truth yes. did not feel good, it didn't feel anything at all, it was just neutral. Glass of water, no flavor. Yeah, everyone likes it. So we're not asking you to not like it. We're just saying if the truth was just so neutral. Neutral is okay. Neutral is okay. I'm just fed up about the heaviness and the lies because I, I, I see them more and more, you know. I see them more and more and it's unbearable. Yes. It's unbearable. Heaviness itself is a lie. Mm. Because to find something too heavy, you have to consider yourself to be something which is an object. I consider myself a heavy object. Heavy object. <laughs> 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 you see? No, if you considered yourself to be a super heavy object, then all this heaviness would not seem like too much. For these knockout punches to come, you see? You obviously you would consider yourself to be a light object which gets over overwhelmed by these other objects that come. Okay, so for instance now, yeah. I feel very light yeah. so uh, and sad at the same time, okay? Yeah. There are these emotions, yeah. but so I can just let them play? Yes. So light, sad, this one, that one, if all of them were to go away, would you still be here or no? And as they come one by one, they come and something leaves, you see, something else comes, sometimes two of them seem to dance, all these things ha seem to happen. You are still there. You see? It's just like you are the stage on which these actors are coming. Sometimes Mr. Joy comes, sometimes Miss Gratitude comes. <laughs> Sometimes <coughs> Master Fear comes. <coughs> Sometimes Mr. Bliss comes. <laughs> All of these things come. But what happens to the stage? Is it? Who do they scratch <coughs> when they come? 
feel comes off. Who is it scratching? I'm not doing a good job. She's laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's felt. It's felt in the body. But, but yeah, it is itself. All this is felt in the body. Now who is it scratching? Who is it denting? Not me. Then who? <laughs> And then the messaging will this is not good. This should go. This is I'm really scared. What's going on? Pray, pray to Father. Pray something else. <laughs> this is going. And uh, who is affected by all this? Come on, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you. <laughs> this, is, this is the one. It's you. Come on, of course. Come on, let's get real. It's you. Yeah. <laughs> Like that. That's all you're dealing with. If you let them play their part on the stage and they exit stage left, after a while, nothing stays on the stage forever. That's coming some sensation and some messaging. No, that's all. Don't have any strategy about it. You see? Don't try to push it away. Don't try to love it to death. Nothing. These actors on the stage, they come and go. The stage is not deciding. I'm going to do this, and this way they will go. You see? It is not even saying if I just stay as the stage, it will go. You see? That's also position. Doesn't have to do anything at all. Like I have spoken about this, many are making tactics out of how to get rid of the actors they don't want by trying to use very so-called loving tactics, isn't it? Like I will um, love my fear to death. I just spoke about this. Like if your intent in your heart is to get rid of it, then the ploy is just fake love. Like I know I can't resist it. because it grows if i resist it so my way to handle it and get rid of it then is to love it is it the way popular new age sort of uh, sort of philosophy it is like in in our heart we wanted to go but we feel like we've heard what we resist persists so let me try the opposite tactic is it so actually i still wanted to go but i will fool it is it and actually we just loving loving my fear But actually, when are you going to go? <laughs> this kind of thing. <laughs> so we cannot fool life like this with this kind of ploys and tactics. If if in our heart there is still limitation, if it is still concept, then we cannot fool our way through this. So just empty of these positions. Is it? Where does it come from? This. emptiness comes from what the true recognition that you are not in this play of object that is one or it comes from true devotion to any form of the divine you see any one of them is enough you see? so when you have a true recognition you see that i am not even in this realm only objects are here i can't find any shape or size to myself you see a uh, uh, auxiliary aspect of myself is it seems to be here which seems so intimate in fact all of this 
is an auxiliary aspect of myself. It is that I was taught to define myself only as this. You see, but I'm not even contained in this. This at best is contained in me. That that is the recognition. If this recognition seems alien, then what is this kind of thing? Then, you see, then if we have some devotion in our heart, you see, and devotion is only worthwhile to that holy presence which takes care of everything, you see, to that holy presence. And whatever you, uh, form you might attach to it, because we need a form just to relate. But actually, we're devoted to this being or self. So, so it is taking care of everything. That is the meaning of devotion. Then we don't have to bother whether it is. <laughs> I am sitting on my father's lap. I don't care. Dance as much as you want. <laughs> but the me having to take care of it is unique to that situation where we are not in our true recognition and we are not in a surrender or a devotional state. See? This me can only seem like it is alive and kicking when, uh, when it is just emotional, emotional ideas are given value over your true insight or, your, or the love in your heart or the devotion in your heart. Isn't it? It's not possible otherwise. Say, Wendy. May I add something? Yeah. Okay, you have to come a little closer so the mic can get you out. It's okay. See, you talked about the, the stage and the actors coming in here. Now, there comes a point when one of the actors starts taking the center stage and starts making so much noise that the entire attention shifts to that yeah. actor in the moment of anger or yeah. mostly anger I would say. Frequently we are able to observe that this is taking over but sometimes it goes beyond our control yeah. and only later on we get to recognize it. So how can we handle that situation? So this is what we are discussing that anger comes. Whenever fear, anger, all this comes it seems like it is center stage. Actually it never is. But it's just that uh, I have this very old example. If I drew a black dot on this wall and I ask all of you, what do you see? Not even one of you will see I see a big white wall. All of you will say I see a black dot. Okay? So if you, this is our life and dealing with these, these emotions, especially like that, that these things come. You see? It's like the dog's tail is wagging. Everybody starts looking only at the tail, the rest of the dog is not seen. <laughs> this is like that. So, when these emotions take sense, the difference between uh, energy constructs which we call thoughts and energy construct that we call emotions is that uh, one has this specific language oriented meaning. You see, this is these thoughts. It just come and go, but they throw a language oriented meaning at you. And these emotions seem to have a quality of lingering. You see? So when they are lingering, let them linger. But don't hold on to any concept about them. Let them come and go. You see? Don't e see if you can not even label it anger. You see? Let attention be on it as much as it likes. Try to leave it empty of any labels. You see? Because if I tell you one thing, you might be a bit surprised. You have never experienced the exact same emotion twice. So that which we call anger actually is a big spectrum. Okay. Just given a com convenient name. <laughs> so, so when this thing is there, okay. if you're not saying I am angry, I should not be angry, when will this anger go, I will be free only when time, or you see all these conclusions. It is, none of them are true because if you like, if you look at our sages, especially if you read stories of our sages, Many have been very angry at times. <laughs> Isn't it? Like there was a sage uh, in Vishwanath. India, 
Vishwamitra, Parshuram, they have destroyed the big dynasties of kings and things like that in their anger. So, don't judge yourself or don't even say that this has to go or this has to stay. Take no position about anything. Because no matter how long something might seem to be center stage, for infinity it is just a blink of an eye that is. And you don't have to deal with it, uh, with your attention in any way. If the attention is fixated on it, then let it be fixated on it. Mm-hmm. You just remain empty of any concepts about it. Mm-hmm. As the Zen master said, these thoughts are visitors, they come and go. Allow them to come and go, just don't serve them tea. Mm-hmm. What is this tea that we serve to them? The tea of our belief, of our identification with them. And one more tip I'll give you is that don't try to solve it for some past version of you or some future version of you. Is it? Because that will keep us caught. We're trying, we're sitting here in satsang and many of us are just trying to solve it for the one that was there yesterday feeling so much something. Or how, will, how is it going to be when satsang gets over and you're not here? Is it? We're still trying to sort it for this version and that version. Instead of tasting ourselves in our reality right now. <coughs> the mind will keep saying, but in, in satsang it's fine, father in satsang it's fine. You see? <coughs> but like that. You see? But actually even in satsang it's not fine. Because we're still buying in two notions of past and future. You see? Any moment when you empty of this, when you allow this unborn to be unborn is satsang. What is happening here is you are allowing yourself to taste your own presence. So, what is here now? What can you say about now? Can I add a, add a supplement to that question? <laughs> what can you say about now without thinking about it? Yeah, <laughs> still thinking about Nothing. it. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Nothing? Even nothing is saying too much, actually. You know what I mean? Neither something nor nothing. Neither this nor that. Neither here nor there. Neither getting it nor missing it. <laughs> Let it go. Will come. This really means something. Okay? But it really doesn't. We will just safely let it go. And this silence, which initially can feel a bit uncomfortable, we just start enjoying the naturalness of that. Uncluttered with false knowing. I won't pull you now. See? <laughs> no, no, I, so I had a, a related question. Yeah. So I've, I've been following the pointing of Sri yeah. for a while now. Sometimes I, I get a doubt whether whether I'm, I'm really able to experience the presence or whether it's a mask created in a very subtle way by the mind itself because it can be very clever. How can I? Yes, I'll help you with this. 
what you have to do is you have to not be don't be for a moment Is it? Don't be now. Then, <laughs> I, I, I get a sense of that, but <laughs> I should not have got the sense. The moment I get it, that means I have not been there. No, it's not complicated. Okay, just like. Come here as if this is your first satsang. You don't know anything about anything. Yeah. and i want you to stop being for a moment it don't exist stop existing so there is a sense of void who is uh, tasting this void is it uh, Atma is sitting next to you. Okay, Atma will not be the best <laughs> term to use at this point. Is it the one sitting next to you who is tasting this void? Whose report are you making? Something. Mm-hmm. Something within. Stop this one. Let that one not be. That which perceives even void. senses yes still something within itself that which perceives all of this is your presence you can't miss it in fact you can never experience it not it not being there Okay, let me ask you another question. Are you aware now? Yes. How did you confirm this? What did you see? I didn't see anything bright. felt was it a feeling felt, felt? just an awareness just an awareness what is the color of it no color no color how old did it feel like no, no age. age how big was it no definition no definition now isn't this unique this discovery itself so simple and yet so unique because everything else do you see a green apple on this couch no no why you say no you didn't see the shape you didn't see the size you didn't see the color green for awareness you said yes for green apple you say no why You see, you see what I'm getting at. That for phenomenal objects, you have to get their attributes, and then we confirm. For this knowingness itself, for this awareness itself, it is so primal that you cannot deny it, and yet you do not perceive it ob- objectively. Can it be as simple as this?
they say no the self is without attributes does not come and go does not have age Asked recently, are you aware? You said yes. I asked you about the attributes. You say no. I said, are you making that report conceptually? You say no. It is an experience, but it is not phenomenal. <laughs> Can you say such a thing? It is the only non-phenomenal experience you can have. The unchanging aspect, the unmanifest aspect of you, is it? which is ever present but prior to presence. See? Now get rid of it. Don't try to hold on to it. Don't even abide in it. Get rid of it. Don't be aware. Throw it away. Push it up. Can you do it? Can't. Can't do it. Then what is the struggle about? If you can't leave it, what are we trying to get? It's just that the attention shifts to. Yes, but the person. Then. Where does the attention report back to? No matter to what it goes. Where does it report back to? Right. <laughs> so, this self, it cannot leave. It's like a dog on a leash. You can go here, 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 here. What can it leave you? You can't. So, we get so obsessed with checking on what is on this side of attention. What is the content it is bringing back? But what is on that side of attention? Who is it bringing it back to? Does that also change? How can I make that 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 side of the attention permanent? I said no. You try to get rid of it. Try to make it impermanent. This is strange satsang you've come to. Okay, here we are not saying we want to make it permanent. I am saying you take this awareness and throw it away. Make it impermanent. Can you do it? Like for one moment, don't be aware. You come fully on this side of your attention, the content side. Leave awareness. Can you do it? Can do it. So the truth is always permanent. You see, it is not coming and going. It is just these ideas which have to go. Good. Are you going to leave the ideas or are you going to leave with the conversation? I am going to leave the ideas. <laughs> <laughs> because many times it can happen that we just <laughs> leave the conversation but you feel like I still have to do this, you know, I still have to make sure that it happens like this. So these are just ideas. And who is the I that you are referring to in all of these ideas? Who has to do this? Awareness. But this awareness, is it, is it doing in the traditional way we think about doing? Like uh, objectively. It has never moved. It has no limbs. <laughs> All of this is this limbs in a way. So it is doing all of this. It is just observing. It is just aware, yes. So every time we make the notion that I must do this or not do that, we are again coming up with a limited version of ourselves and buying into that, isn't it? See? Now, not doing is another version of doing. See if you can mm. follow this. Yeah. You see? 
when you make this intention that I'm not going to do now because Ananta said I don't have to do anything I'm just not going to do you see when you're doing the not doing you're taking the position of the not doer but that's not what I'm saying I'm saying doing and not doing is not applicable to your truth now this the mind cannot fathom he'll try to make a concept around it say something but it really can't fathom neutrality you can either fathom doing doing not doing not doing if i say both or neither what is left so how does it play when we let's say in a work situation yes yeah. right? i am in a meeting i have to respond to someone mm. i have to either intend to respond or intend not to respond mm. and does the it always follow this intention remain does the response always follow these intentions <laughs> not this <laughs> example no no as a group i had a terrible boss without any names <laughs> i had a terrible boss one evening i decided tomorrow morning when i go to work and we're going to tell him to get lost or something right really. so full intention showed up at work still carrying that intention came in front of my boss and you know what words came from this mouth good morning what can i do for you today is <laughs> it <laughs> many times same same many times different different is it and uh, just like the arising of thoughts is unpredictable you see they just come and go action does the same way both are just uh, aspects of consciousness both are just if you want to call them something energy constructs or the play of light play of the light of consciousness you see it can play any which way with any of this so this fallacy that there is cause and effect you see is uh, is only leads to the concept of time only leads to the concept that you are an object stuck in time if there is a cause it is consciousness you see no even a blade of grass moves only by the will of god If this is true, then what we mean by what should I do? So why does anything happen or not happen? How does anything happen or not happen? When does anything happen or not happen? With the play of consciousness, you yourself, you yourself said play. We were at work all day today. this happen no the day goes through let me tell you another thing you don't know how to move a finger do you know so then how will do anything at all Sometimes the one says to me, and I ask this question. He says, "Of course, I know." And I'm like, "Here, move finger. Here, see, see, see. see. Then how you move that finger? Oh, so this ha- what happens is there are neurons in the brain, and there's a nervous system. So the neurons get activated, and then the nerves get activated, and then the finger moves. You see this kind of thing. So I say, so how you activate the neuron? Who knows how to do that?" Where is the instruction manual for that? Nobody knows how any of this is happening. You just presume that there is a individual doer of them. At least we are not doing it consciously. At least we are not doing it I mean, consciously. It may be happening subconsciously somewhere. Well, <laughs> beyond our control. Subconsciousness is a, a popular concept in Western psychology, Freud, you know, all of that stuff. for me there is just consciousness 
What is subconsciousness? <laughs> See, these are just terms that we bought ideas about. Yeah, I was, I was talking from a science perspective, not from. Yeah, it's a psychology. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Even scientists yeah. don't speak of the subconsciousness. This is more the. Was it Freud or Jung? You know, those that sort of philosophy. But the consciousness we speak of has no sub or super. It is one consciousness, one being. Yeah. Just the same way as your heart is beating, your breath is flowing. You see millions of uh, processes undergoing in this one body. All of this universe has so much going on seemingly. In whose light is all of this happening? What is the light of your waking state? Who wakes up? is a good answer because <laughs> we actually cannot know in truth you never not know mentally you cannot know so as long as you keep referring back to this device and saying okay if there is a concept which seems to encapsulate some truth then I know it and if the concept is not there, <coughs> then this I don't know is actually preferable. Yeah, it's not in, in my experience. What? Living experience, what, what wakes up or what sleeps. All I know is that then his body goes sleep? to sleep and then and it wakes up. Th that's all. The body wakes up. What happens to you when the body wakes up? today? Around 6. 6. And what time did you sleep last night? 11.30. So what, where were you between 11.30 and 6? Still there, but yeah. not perceiving anything. Good. Then who noticed that you woke up? Still me. So, this you, which is the witness of the sleep state and the waking state. Itself is empty of all phenomenal criteria. Which you is that one? What remains unchanged through all these states, they come and go. Waking, sleeps, dream. 
what is that unchanging fourth? Must be here now. Which one is that one? Just awareness. Just awareness. self, business, the absolute, whatever we call it. Remember the terms are never it. If we get too attached to any term again it will become <coughs> conceptual. What are you doing to hold this awareness up? What are you doing to hold this world up? Why the nothing didn't come as naturally as <laughs> Nothing. This world is moving effortlessly. Awareness, the self, the unmanifest is here effortlessly. The only effort is in concepts. Now, once you make a boundary about yourself that I am only this, okay, then you will attach all kinds of attributes to it. I want this, so desire will come. What do I do or not do? Doership will come. And inherently, the boundary making itself is duality. 3D ego. Duality, desire and doership. It has never existed. It's a fallacy. How do you exist in your hands? How do you exist in your hands that you don't exist in the space between them? What is that one? There is nobody like that. <laughs> there is nobody like that. See this fallacy that I am contained in my body. So what is here in my hands that is not in the space between these hands? What am I, some sort of ghost who's got a body shape? <laughs> Just like, like just fits exactly in the shape of <laughs> is it like that? Casper the friendly ghost or what? You know all these ideas. Father, I'm sorry, this may sound strange. I have been working on not believing thoughts. But how about the evidence that supports the thoughts? I have a thought that says I ate a chocolate. But how can not believe? <laughs> This is very, I'm glad you asked this question. You see? Now, I'm not saying that you believe the opposite thought. I'm not saying that you believe, oh, I did not eat a chocolate. I did not. I'm saying, leave yourself open <coughs> from this conceptual uh, concepts because they are not true anyway. You, you do not need the concept I ate a chocolate to eat a chocolate. You see? Just like I don't need the concept, glass, drink, you see? just like an infant born doesn't need concepts of mother and milk to drink. So all this functioning can happen, but we don't need the concept about it because uh, in one small four letter sentence there are so many lies. No? I ate a chocolate, is which I is this. 
we try to short live. Okay. We are presuming that the limit itself mostly. Okay. And again, even in what might sound like very phenomenal terms, okay, like sometimes I take the example that what to do with these very just representative of phenomena thoughts, like the coconut is green. Okay. Firstly, the perception of the so-called greenness or coconutness of any object does not need the concept the coconut is green. You see? Secondly, it will not rest in that concept. It will quickly say, okay, <coughs> I like coconuts. Coconuts are very sweet at this time of the year. You see, I was born in Kerala. You know, these kind of things will quickly come. <laughs> at the tail of these very harmless sounding concepts. So, but for the perception of phenomena, uh, we don't need a concept. In fact, the concept is the avoidance of it. Try looking at a flower sometimes. Maybe we'll take a flower. this is white flower, this grows in Bangalore, it has really this kind of thing, no, the perception of it is just what it is. Yeah. Now the minute we put it in the basket of idea of our flower, then we are mixing time into it, history into it, what it means for us into it, really? so we're on top of this, this pure perception, we are mixing all the ideas. You see? Now this is a harmless example, you see? but we do it for human beings also. You see? This one looks like he's very spiritual, he may not be so interested in the world. This one looks like a hippie. This one, you see? we don't truly really meet anyone. We meet them only in this photocopy version of the mind, which is in our labels. You see? This is like this, this is right, this is wrong. You see, the minute you start putting labels, Oh, I like red better than white. You see, all these comparisons, all of that. But if you left it unlabeled, what an experience it is. Yeah. If you leave it unlabeled. That's why I say that I saw a flower for the first time after meeting my master. I don't feel like I ever saw it truly before that. Because it's just meeting a version of it in my mind. Or quickly take some things from here, some things from here. You see? And quickly say, yeah. And very quickly, we are away from just the perception of it and go to our version of it saying, okay, I got this, it's a flower. Really? It's just like this. So, so this is avoidance. Really? The avoidance of just what is appearing or just what is the content of our perception using an idea of knowing what it is. If you leave things unlabeled, you will quickly see that you are the space in which they are arising. The minute you attach a knowing of what it is, the conceptual knowing of what it is, it is too much, you see. Because if you use a term like uh, guilt, okay, I'm very guilty, then it is loaded with every single instance that you stored up in your memory when you've been guilty. You see, it is already too much to deal with the minute you say, I am so guilty right now. You see, if you were just tasting what what was appearing just for what it is, but once we identify it as that, you see, it is not just that we create a mental concept of it, 
it is also that it is loaded with all that we think about that concept, you see, in all our past experiences and everything that we have attached to that notion. Okay. And what is actually appearing is long gone because we, we are living in our mind now. So it is not that we take one position and replace it for a new position which is on the opposite end of that. We just move beyond our concept of knowing. These concepts can come, they can play, you know, all this is fine. But I'm saying don't attach meaning to them, don't give them too much value. And we are not taking a new position or being in denial of them. We are not be believing the opposite position or something like that. Subconscious means that which I repress. Repressed in the waking state, mostly desires and fears. Someone says that. For me, subconscious means that which I repress. Repressed in the waking state, mostly desires and fears. It's okay. How do you, how you want to use the terms actually is fine. It's no trouble. But just don't make too many side projects. But I must uh, work on my subconscious nature or something like that. Yeah? beauty of this uh, simple, straightforward, natural, sahaja way of remaining in our notionless existence is that all the cleanup that needs to happen apparently is also taken care of. There is no actual thing like uh, the world. There is no actual thing like the world, the body, the mind, even consciousness, awareness. There is no actual thing like that. It is just that we take from our existence, we make certain boundaries and say, oh, this is world. This certain set of sensations, this is body. Okay, visual perceptions and some sensations, we label them together in a basket and say this is body. Then another set of energy constructs which which carry this language and meaning and all of this <coughs> stuff, we say this is mind. Okay, mind is a bundle of thoughts, like Bhagavan said. Okay, so, and then the very just presence of existence, we say this is just being, you know? different sensations, we call emotion, this is anger, this is fear, this is joy, you know? but the, the terms are not inherent in the, in the sensations or the perception of them, this is just terms we use for communication, there is no distinction ever between anything in reality. After a long time, good to see you, my dear. She says, Dear Ananta, love the pointing at the beginning. What do you know when you don't know anything? Now, this is the first, and nobody has ever told me this before. <laughs> that I love this. Mostly, it's just like uh, this one said to me, uh, When you were first sharing this kind of pointing, I was like, What is this crazy stuff? Then I had to convince myself, Shh, don't talk like that. He's your master. You know, trust him. <laughs> so I'm glad to hear somebody saying, 
or do you know when you don't know anything you love to not or may not it seems like another name another name for me is i don't know now what if even to say i don't know is to know something that i don't know then where does that leave us i all of you might feel like this is some sort of terrible place but this which is beyond even i don't know i think it we said about that. this is what all the pointing is for so if i was to say that even to know that i don't know is to know too much then what are you left with then what is still apparent to you don't find words for it it's not easy taste it. to hear from you my dear i feel like it's been a few years maybe google hangout or something was when we last spoke Thank you all so much for being in Satsang today. Sadguru Shri Muji Baba ki Jai. Sadguru Shri Ananta Ji ki Jai. Guru Kripa ke bolo. Guru Kripa ke bolo.